What's up guys, Rogue9 here and we're continuing our quest to explore the least loved Battlefield 1 weapons and today we're taking a closer look at the self-loading rifles of the Medic class. Onwards and upwards! In my last video about the SMGs I unearthed a true hidden gem, so fingers crossed we can do the same today. As with all the other weapon classes, players have already really homed in on their favourite self-loading rifles. And in fact the top 4 most used variants out of the 16 available add up to a combined usage time of 64.1%. Of course this usage data is as at the 17th of February 2017 and is liable to change in future. But nevertheless, let's quickly run through the top 4 spots in this category. First up we have the M1907 Sweeper with a usage time of 21.5%. Then we have the Selbstlader M1916 Marksman with a usage time of 17.3%. The Mondragon Storm variant with 13% and the Autoloading 8 Extended at 12.3%. And before we move on, I think it's also worth noting that the Selbstlader M1916 has seen a significant uptick in both usage time and kills over the last few days. And I think this can be explained by the introduction of the Elite Codices, and players starting to work towards unlocking these codices by getting 500 kills with a specific weapon type is something I'm going to have to take into account with my videos going forward. But of course with this series it's not really that important because we're not interested in the most popular weapons, we're interested in digging through the dirt because that's where hidden gems lie. Looking at the least popular autoloading rifles, we have the Autoloading 8 Marksman coming in with a usage time of 1%. Then we have the M1907 Factory with 0.7%. And right at the very bottom, we have the Autoloading 8 Factory with 0.6%. As always, I will be taking a closer look at the weapon stats before then taking it out for a spin to try it out for myself. Looking at the damage statistics, we can see that the Autoloading 8 Factory has one of the highest damage stats at close range, but at distances of 52 meters and above, its damage rating drops down to a mediocre 30 points per hit. And this immediately suggests that the Autoloading 8 Factory is kind of intended to be a close range weapon, maybe with the capability of reaching out to medium range. And its high fire rate and low muzzle velocity support this idea. Very strong in close, not so strong when it comes to further distances. The only issue here is the tiny magazine size of only 5 shots. 5 bullets, if you're shooting at the torso doing 42 points of damage, that means you can kill exactly one person, because it will take 3 shots and then you'll have 2 left, which won't kill another guy. That's a worry. When it comes to recoil, the autoloading 8 is kind of mediocre. It's not as bad as some, but definitely not as good as others. Its reload time from MT of 3.234 seconds makes it slightly faster than its magazine-fed cousins, but slightly slower than the other strip-loading rifles, but I have to say the differences here are virtually negligible. When it comes to replacing your ammunition with individual bullets, again, the differences between the rifles are not really all that great. The only thing to keep in mind is that you should never individually load more than two bullets. As soon as you start putting in 3 or even 4 bullets one by one, you're going to be slower than if you just empty the gun and use a strip. Looking at the spread, which is essentially the weapon's accuracy, we can again see that this is meant to be a close quarters fighting weapon. Just like the M1907 SL Factory and the Che Rigotti Factory, which share the exact same stats. The spread we see when aiming down sights and not moving is actually the worst we see amongst the self-loading rifles, but it's when aiming down sights and moving or when hip-firing that the auto-loading 8 shines. So what conclusions can we draw from all of this? Well, like I said right in the beginning, this seems to be a close quarters weapon. High damage, high fire rate and good hip-firing statistics all support this theory. And conversely, the relatively low accuracy when aiming down sights and standing still and the low muzzle velocity mean that the gun's capability of fighting at medium or long range is significantly restricted. So close quarters it is, but there is one significant drawback to this weapon and that is its ridiculously small magazine size of only 5 bullets. 
Like I said earlier, that means you can kill all of one enemy before you have to reload. And if we compare this to its main close quarters competitor, the M1907SL, which has 21 bullets, well that's 7 enemies, potentially, that you could kill at close range. So we might assume that this gun really isn't all that good, and maybe even deserves its status as the least loved self-loading rifle of Battlefield 1. But of course it would be unfair to write off this gun without giving it a fair chance, so let's take it out for a spin. Let's maybe start out by analysing its capability at medium to long range. Its damage rating of 30 points would certainly suggest that it has an advantage here over the other close quarters self-loading rifles. And at least on paper its accuracy disadvantage when aiming down sights and standing still doesn't look that great. But in practice, the gun basically feels broken. I mean, look at the situation here. I'm uncontested, stationary, firing at stationary targets that are maybe 150 odd meters away. And the bullets are getting thrown left and right in such a way that I'm really only hitting one shot per magazine. I mean, the level 10 medic weapon, the Selbstlader 1906, gets a lot of flak, but I really like it. And if I'd had it here, I would have been hitting these guys. So the apparent slight damage advantage that the autoloading 8 has over other close quarters rifles is completely nullified by the fact that you can't hit anything. So much for that advantage, but now let's move in closer to the enemy, where this gun is supposed to have its main advantage, and here my experience was kind of mixed. Yes, in a one-on-one -on -one right up close you can kill the enemy really quickly. But if there's more than one enemy, and guess what, that kind of happens in Battlefield 1, your tiny magazine size is a massive handicap. And if the enemy is more than 25-30 meters away, which is still pretty close, and if he has the audacity to move on top of that rather than standing still for you, you're already going to struggle to reliably hit every shot, and that's what you're going to need to do basically to take out your opponent. So guys, I went rooting through the muck for you in the hope of unearthing a hidden gem and I am sorry to report I found a fossilized turd instead. This weapon is truly infuriating and you can definitely do better by picking other guns. If you want to be fighting at long range, there's all of the Marksman variants open to you or even the Selbstlader 1906. If you're going to be fighting up close, well the M1907SL is your better choice. And just like I found with my analysis of the least loved machine gun in Battlefield 1, link to the entire series coming up soon, check that out if you like, I would say that even if you really want to stick with the autoloading 8, you have two better variants at your disposal right now. At close range, the 25 caliber extended variant is much better than the factory version we've just been looking at, and if you anticipate fighting at further distances, well go with the autoloading marksman variant. Up until now, the autoloading 8 35 caliber factory variant has been shunned by the Battlefield 1 community, and at least in my opinion, I think rightfully so. But as always, that's just my opinion, and I'd really like to hear what you think of this gun. Have you used it? What did you think of it? Feel free to leave your comments below. As mentioned before, this is part of a series, so if you enjoyed this video, there's more for you to check out. Link on screen now. And with that guys, as always, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.